running across the gangplank, I followed my captain to meet the newest addition to my family, my new baby girl, my daughter. She was born while I was a couple thousand miles away, just a couple months before that. She was sleeping peacefully in her mother's arms while I hold my wife for a long needed embrace and a long needed yearning for a companionship. We tied the ship off and uh, we disembarked to join our families once again after the long patrol that kept us away while we defended the country and the world from nuclear holocaust by being humanity's greatest threat. Driving home, we exchange glances and loving gestures. We pull into the driveway, home at last, I'm thinking to myself. I killed the engine, walked up the stairs and across the threshold and started a long needed rest after the duties of the past few months. Now let's warp forward a little bit because we don't want to get graphic here. <laughs> but the next few days were recuperating and adjusting to life outside of the 540 foot submarine that became home to my crew for a few months and it became time to go to visit the rest of my family and we went across the Puget Sound to do that so we took the ferry now taking the ferry in Washington was a rather uneventful event most of the time get on right across get off the ferry. This time it had a kind of a special ring to it and I got to introduce my daughter to her grandmother for the first time and even her aunt. So we dock, we drive off the pier, head to my mom's house. And that's in the city of SeaTac, if any of you are familiar with the area. After a couple hours visit with her, we head to my sister's house and introduce her to her new niece. By the time we left, it was almost one in the morning, and I remember when she, when we were saying goodbye, you know, she said, "Be careful," and I said, "Always." And then all of a sudden, Bidaster Kitty, open your eyes, raise two fingers. My eyelids raise slowly, and I see two fingers come up in front of an image of my mother and a uh, doctor. From this point, images and sounds are a blur. Hearing nurses and doctors talk about my medical situation in the next room among the other staff and most of the time I'm hearing dialogue of he was almost pronounced dead at the scene when he was revived and boy it's a miracle that he came back. I faintly heard a nurse, one of dozens, but this one was talking to me. She said, Petty Officer, can you hear me? You have the same serious injuries. 
in a car accident. And right now you're in a coma. And you have a broken clavicle. We almost lost you there. But you're going to be fine now. Welcome back. Can you hear me? <laughs> so, you know, uh, at this point, anything coming out of my mouth was completely unintelligible. Didn't make sense to anyone, including me. But I had to try anyway, right? I spent a month in a coma. Slowly learning how to walk, talk, speak, even eat without getting it all over me. That was a very humbling experience. Now, because I was in the military, I was able to read medical charts, uh, my own medical charts. I was allowed to do that. Something they don't really let you do in civilian lets you really push them hard. I started to read my medical charts and I tried to get a grasp on the situation. It was like reading a story about someone else at first. I remember nothing of the events that, uh, you know, took place. The injuries that were described matched mine, but you know, the only thing that linked me was my name. Nothing seemed familiar. There was a single car accident on the highway close to my home. Man ejected from the car, unresponsive, no vital signs, revived during a bout of CPR, transported to a local hospital, transferred to the military hospital in the area, unresponsive, unresponsive to all but pain. The patient uttered only unintelligible sounds, but has an incredibly strong right hand grip. Apparently I attacked somebody who was trying to move me because it hurt. Two weeks worth of information about this patient goes by when I finally run across a familiar point in this chart. With his mother nearby, he raised two fingers on command. Now, I checked the date for this, and then I referenced back to the date of the accident. Dropping the chart, I stood there in disbelief, world spinning all around me. An entire two weeks? I worked 14 days into the future without so much as a dream? I was transported in an ambulance twice, jerked all around the place, poked, prodded, pushed for half a month while I was not even there. I even attacked someone and didn't even know it. It was then I started to realize that I was being taught something all my life that may be wrong. This started my quest for the truth. Why was I told that I would see heaven or hell when I died? Why, would I, why was I told I'd see a tunnel and flashing lights? I started to look into exactly how people would be able to tell if there was an afterlife. Without their brain functioning, there is no evidence to confirm that there is. This started me thinking. <laughs>